thanks very much, uh, Kathy, for, for inviting me to come here. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background. I do teach at the University of Singapore, and I'm an infectious disease physician. Um, I'm a fifth generation Christian. I was baptized in the Anglican Church. And my grandfather was actually um, pastor of St. Andrew's Cathedral in Singapore during the Second World War. Uh, and that was a time when uh, Japanese bombs uh, and British bombs were, were falling over the, uh, the cathedral. But he kept the services going all through the war. Uh, and that's something that my mom is really very proud of. So I did my postgraduate training at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And uh, there were a lot of changes in the Anglican Church in Singapore. And as a result, um, I ended up becoming a Lutheran because that's the, the kind of dominant religion in medicine. And, uh, <laughs> and it was, uh, but seriously, it was more through the ministry of uh, Luther Memorial Church. Um, and in fact, uh, we, we visited the different main, mainstream churches in Madison. Um, and uh, I remember the pastor at Luther Memorial was Amy Ruman, who's the daughter of Jack Ruman, the uh, New Testament scholar. And uh, I wrote her a note saying I disagreed with what she had said at the, uh, at the sermon. And she actually uh, wrote back a very polite uh, letter saying uh, that she would come and visit us. And, and Siok reminded me that she brought a jar of jam. Uh, and in the end, we ended up uh, going to that church. So uh, we returned to Singapore in 1999. And, and we discovered that the, uh, right across the road was a Lutheran church. And so we joined that, and we've been Lutherans ever since. Uh, Ed and Marie came over as ELCA theologians in residence in March 2004 to Singapore. And they spent three months there. Uh, and just like we do to academics uh, who come from anywhere, uh, they really worked very hard. Ed gave 20 sermons, eight teaching sessions for the clergy, six lectures in our seminary, and 15 adult education sessions, which was pretty amazing. Um, and it was at one of those uh, sessions for the lay people that I first heard the aha of the gospel uh, and, I was, uh, and I was hooked by it, even though I'd been going to a Lutheran church for several years uh, before that. But it had never been put so clearly and, and crisply. Uh, Siok and I were very keen to meet with Ed and Marie again, but we didn't get a chance to until just before they left Singapore. And, and believe it or not, we met in a McDonald's in the uh, <laughs> northern suburbs of Singapore. And uh, anyway, um, it, was, it was a good encounter. Uh, and it helped uh, build up this relationship, which uh, some of you may remember in 2004 in Boxing Day, there was that terrible tsunami which uh, occurred in Southeast Asia uh, and thousands of people died. Um, our church ran a small orphanage on the island of Nias, uh, which was flattened, but fortunately none of the kids were hurt. Uh, and so Ed helped us um, making connections with fundraising for the reconstruction, but more importantly, linking us up with, uh, with Christians in that area who who we didn't really know about, in particular Bishop uh, Amencius Munte, um, who came for the Crossing Seminar in 2009, um, and, I, and I met him there. So I, I went for the Crossing Seminar in 2009, and, and, and Siok, my wife, says that that actually changed my life, uh, and I think she's right. Uh, it gave me a different perspective on people and things, um, looking at them through a law and gospel lens. And I'll give you an example. About a year after that, I was asked to do a session for the Lutheran Church in Singapore on the ethics of organ trading, because Singapore had decided to pass legislation to allow compensation for, for donors of uh, kidneys or livers. Um, and it was hugely controversial. Uh, and people in the church on, were on looking at it on both sides of, of the question. And, um, and so what I did was I wrote to Ed, and I think he crowdsourced some, uh, some views from, from several of you in, in the audience. Uh, and so we, we, we presented it um, in the church, looking at this question of, uh, should we compensate donors uh, of organs using a, a, a law and gospel, a diagnosis and prognosis uh, framework, which was really very novel. Uh, we didn't get the, a perfect answer. And, and like I said, for many of these issues, you never get a perfect answer. But I think it made a lot of people think about the issue very differently from what they would have normally done. So um, there is a real gap in Singapore with no Lutheran seminary, even though we have seven Lutheran con six Lutheran congregations. And our pastors are trained in either Reformed or Wesleyan traditions. And that's part of the reason why Ed was invited, and also part of the reason why we had uh, Steve Cool come over four years ago. Now, Ed had a truly uh, global impact. In fact, it wasn't just um, through Singapore, but it was through him that I got involved with a school project in northeastern India that I think also some of you all are involved with. And that I met with uh, Paul Munte, the son of Bishop Munte. 
Um, and I didn't even know that, but he was actually in Singapore doing his doctorate at Trinity Theological College in Singapore. So, uh, so when Ed mentioned uh, that he was in Singapore, I got linked up with him. A and he's actually from Indonesia, so English is not his first language. And I helped him edit his thesis, um, just going over the grammar and the spelling and things like that. A and it was through editing his thesis that I found out a huge amount about the church in North Sumatra, which is just an hour away from Singapore, which I knew nothing about. And I would have known nothing about without uh, Ed and his network. And that was really uh, very humbling and enlightening. So I have been a subscriber to Crossings for 15 years. Um, we read the text study every Sunday evening and it reminds us of the gospel that we don't always get on Sunday morning. And uh, don't always get, yeah. Um, personally though, I think um, I, I really need that uh, reminder of, of the law which kills but the gospel which brings life. Because I have been reasonably successful in, in the university. I got my tenure about um, uh, six years ago. Um, and I've been uh, quite successful at work. But it's, uh, it's so easy to, to get caught up in the idea that, especially in Singapore, where, where meritocracy or, or the idea that, you know, uh, Singapore is the opposite of a welfare state. We believe that everyone can pull themselves up by the bootstraps if you, if you just provide the right set of incentives. And, and so people who do well think that they've done well because, uh, you know, there's something intrinsically better in them or that they've worked harder than everyone else. But, uh, you know, this is a, a very powerful antidote to that kind of, of teaching and, and, and ideology. And it helps remind me how dependent we are on God himself. Um, uh, I was, I've been talking with some of you and I've mentioned how the healthcare system in Singapore used to be a really good system, but unfortunately we're committed to repeating all the mistakes of US healthcare of the last 20 years. <laughs> uh, we've got HMOs, we've got insurance companies coming in, and we've got everything else, uh, these electronic medical records that are designed for billing. Um, and unfortunately the church in Singapore is, um, is also committed to repeating a number of the mistakes of the, uh, the US church. Uh, the, the most recent um, uh, phenomenon which occurred was uh, the church hit the headlines in Singapore because they, they got a, a Swedish death metal band uh, uh, banned from playing in Singapore because they didn't like the lyrics of, uh, of this heavy metal music. I don't like the lyrics of any heavy metal music. So, <laughs> so I, I strongly disagreed with that, but they just went ahead and, and did it. And of course, it hit the news and it made uh, you know, Christians in Singapore look like killjoys which uh, doesn't help the gospel at all. But um, Ed showed us the reality of a complete dependence of God and everything, which has been completely liberating to me. I don't need to prove anything to anyone in the medical school, in the hospital, or in the church. And to me, that's really good news. Thank you.